Now that we've actually completed our look on the bulk flow transport of water and minerals, we're going to shift gears and actually look at a different transport, and that would be the transport of sugar. So we're still doing long distance transport. That's what we'll entitle this next flow chart, but this is going to be part four. Long distance transport. And this is part four to that, not six, but four. There we go. And what we're going to be focusing on here is something known as sugar translocation. How we move sugar long distance from roots to shoots, essentially, or even shoots to roots, as we'll see. So sugar translocation is all about sugar transport. And in this first flowchart on this idea, we'll do an overview of the process. Sugar transport overview. Here what we want to focus on are a couple of things. First and foremost, where does sugar even come from? What happens initially is, of course, the idea of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis produces sugars through that very powerful, uh, mechanistic, and beautiful biochemical set of reactions uh, to produce sugars. And when we've produced these sugars, a plant specifically, most of these will be converted to a more usable form known as sucrose. And sucrose is just a dimer. It is two monomers, specifically a disaccharide that is glucose and fructose combined together via a glycosidic bond. Remember all that stuff from bio one. Don't let that go on the wayside. So that's how sugars are formed, essentially. What do we do with them then? Well, what we do with them, next thing to understand, is the idea of a phloem sap. So now we're changing gears in terms of what vascular structure we're looking at. We've talked about the xylem extensively, the root xylem, the stem xylem, the leaf xylem. Now we're talking about the phloem, specifically the phloem sap. What is this phloem sap? This is an aqueous solution. It's an aqueous solution, so it's mainly water. That's what we mean by aqueous. But it's specifically going to be high in sucrose levels. So it's going to have tons of sucrose, but also, some people don't forget this, oftentimes forget this, but also um, amino acids. So those are important for a plant because plants make proteins and they need those monomers, amino acids. Also hormones, which we'll be focusing on in the next lecture, and minerals. Some of these things, or all of these things, will be found in a collection known as the phloem sap that's an aqueous solution full of these things, a lot more soluble, let's say, within the phloem vascular structure than in the xylem vascular structure. That specific solute mixture is called the sap. Now, what we want to understand about the phloem is the following in terms of its mechanism. The phloem which is always going to be referring to sugar, essentially, conducts dissolved sugars. Conducts is another way of moves, saying moves or transports. Dissolved sugars. That's its main focus and main job. Of course, it also carries these other things, but right now what we're focusing on are the sugars, specifically sucrose. And what I also want to mention is that the phloem is bidirectional. What is not bidirectional? The xylem. The xylem was unidirectional. The phloem can move up, down, down, up, doesn't matter. It can move both ways in the plant. The xylem can only go roots to shoots, meaning water can only go roots to shoots and never backwards. So how can we sort of explain this? Well, the phloem is going to be a bidirectional vascular route because what happens is that the sugar is made in the leaves Leaves are part of the shoots, right, of the plant, and that's going to have to go down to the roots. The roots need sugar to do some of their processes, like active transport, down to roots for specifically use, let's say, or even storage. The place where plants store their sugars is actually going to be in the roots. And how do we store them? You move them. How do you move them? You use the phloem. And that's going to be done from this shoots to roots mechanism. That's a different mechanism, different route than we've seen before. Um, and the use specifically would be something like, remember that problem of active transport? How do we get the sugar and oxygen that we need to do the active transport to bring in the water? That's the use right here. You take the sugar made in the leaves, bring it down to the roots, and use it for something like AT, active transport. That was our problem, remember? And that's solved, essentially, through this process. In addition, what we also can state is that sugar is stored in the roots, like I said right there. But that would mean that it's stored here 
stored, uh, sugar is stored in the root, but that would mean it also has to be a place where it leaves and goes somewhere else, right? So once it's stored here, sometimes it's going to need to be moved up. So this is moved down, this is moved up. Why is that? Because it's bidirectional. Moved up to other parts for, let's say, generally speaking, growth and maintenance. Why does sugar result in growth and maintenance? Well, that's because it is a absolutely critical process of cell respiration, and cell respiration is a critical process of life, specifically growing and maintaining life as a whole. So that's our basic job of the phloem, to conduct sugar up and down, bidirectionally, because all things within the plant need sugar, and all things are going to receive sugar based off of either of these scenarios. Finally, last thing about sugar transport in terms of the overview is the idea of translocation. The term translocation is going to broadly just define as, let's just say, in my words, I would say this just means food transport. Translocation is food transport within a plant. What we're going to have is a series of sources and sinks in a sense that this would mean that we would have a sugar source within the plant. A source is going to be any place in the plant that has an area, uh, that any area, let's say, with excess, that's why it's called a source, excess sugar. Thus the name, sugar source. For example, the leaf. Why would the leaf have excess sugar? Well, the leaf is doing tons of photosynthesis, thus it's producing tons of sugars that are being converted to sucrose and being sort of there, in a sense. Another place with excess sugar? Probably the roots, right? That's where sugar is stored. So those are both possible sources. There will also be a sugar sink. Remember, sources and sinks will be a part of translocation. What is a sink? This is going to be um, an area of storage slash metabolism. In essence, this would be where we would see something like the roots and seeds, okay? Roots slash seeds. So I know I mentioned roots could be a source. Uh, I think it's a better, actually, scratch that. It's a better to think of it as a sink, because that's what it really sort of fits in as, much more so than a source. Uh, but we will see that this distinction between source and sink is not necessarily black and white. There's tons of gray area between these, as we'll see in the next flowchart. But the one thing that's absolutely certain is that the movement, the translocation, of sugar is is it going to be sink to source or source to sink well the movement in essence the translocation is always 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 this is one of those rules you got to remember always source to sink that's absolutely certain in all plants um, and here, what we're going to sort of understand is that sometimes an organ may be a source and other times it may be a sink, like the root, let's just say. The root can be a source, it can be a sink, but no matter what, the movement that's going to happen will always be source to sink. Sugar always goes from an area of excess to an area of storage and metabolism, never the other way around. And it makes sense. When you have excess sugar somewhere, you want to send it to be stored somewhere. And if it's stored or metabolized, then you've succeeded in the translocation that you need it to do. And that's our overview of sugar transport. We'll look at the specific mechanism in the next and final flowchart.